Welcome back to Tom's Garage. Ooh, today, somebody asked money. Well, anywho, uh, somebody asked me if I could go over how I could replace some spark plug boots. And that's what we're gonna do today. That's what we're gonna do today. I got a couple of things out of the old, out of the old junk shed. What we have is a echo blower. I'm gonna pull this boot off and put it back on. We got a little husky weed eater. And then I'm gonna pull this off this uh, Tecumseh engine. And we got us a Honda engine. Honda engine. And I keep a couple of boxes on the shelf with some extra coils and spark plug boots and stuff. You know, you've got several different, several different styles. And I think I got a variety of each I can show you guys. And I've got one more Briggs. This is a EX series off a little push mower. We're gonna take a look at this one too. Well, let's see, I chose this Echo because it's got such a good long spark plug wire. Lots to work with. If you had to, in a pinch, if this thing broke, you can cut it back a little bit because you've got, got a little bit of extra play in that. Let me raise the camera up a little bit. So we're going to pull this boot off. Grab my flash of that. And inside, you have got just the basic little coil that will just click onto the top of the spark plug. So many times I've seen people trying to pull these things off the spark plug and the whole boot and everything comes out. So I'm gonna, yeah, you can see how tight it is. This thing's gonna break loose. I'm gonna knock the camera across the shop. I can just feel it. There we go. There we go. And that coil stayed in the boot and it's in there. It's pulled halfway down the little tube there. And you can see the spark plug wire itself. It's got a little hole right there. I don't know if this flashlight's helping or making it worse. But you've got a little hole in it. Let me grab my needle nose. What I'm gonna do is uh, squirt a little bit of this strike hole just a little bit. Cause it's, it's dielectric, it's not gonna hurt any kind of, it'll, It'll uh, dry out your electrical connections. It's a great water displacer. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a little squirt, just a little bit. And that will allow us to reach in there and try to grab that little hook. There it is right there at the end. There it is. See, with a little lube, you can just pull it right out. And that is all it is. This little coil goes right in that hole. Now, when you put this back in there, you want to make sure you go straight into the wire, just like that. And then we'll slide the boot over it. Be very careful not to make it go out the side it has to go straight down because it's got to go straight down through and get that wire right in the middle. It's got a real thick jacket on it. So you've got a pretty small target. Just like that. And grab a rag. That strike hold, man, that, that stuff will creep everywhere and get on everything. If you get too much on there, it's kind of hard to hang on to. So what we'll do is just force it back through there. With it being lubricated, it ought to slide right on. There it is. And always use a lubricant. You're trying to fight that stuff dry, it just, you're just going to be fighting unnecessary, unnecessary battle. 
Well, that's the Echo. And this little Husky Barn is gonna be the same way, except it is angled. Let me see if I can put that flashlight somewhere. Here, ain't doing much help, is it? But this little Husqvarna, there's so many styles like this, Echoes and steel, and they all use, it's got a real sharp, it's almost like a 45 degree angle, the wire comes and right down to it. See how short the wire is? May have to take this cover off. What I'll do is give it a little squirt. You can see the you can see the coil the same way as that one, but that one is a 90 degree. This one is more of a 45. Grab the wire and just pull it off. And there goes your coil. See the other coil, this was more 90 degrees straight down. This one is curved. Because you're gonna have it. You're going to have it at a 45. That's going to be more of a 45. So what I'll do, if you've got a new wire and you have to poke a new hole, make sure, like I said, go straight through down, straight down through it. Put it back in there. Or if you just accidentally pull the boot off, just kind of find the old hole. But see how See how that is going to sit at an angle opposed to the wire. Almost a 45. Now when you fight this thing back on, when you fight it back on, you got to hang on to it. It's just going to want to walk all over the place. Oop, look at there. Come back here. Hook it in. I'm gonna take my fingers and hold it. And push it on. Sometimes you can go ahead and get it started in the boot, then you can hook it to the wire. And just follow it right down. Take your time. And sometimes that hook can go all the way through the wire and try to catch the boot on the bottom. Try not to damage it. Let's see what we got here. We're not in yet. You see how that hook has grabbed that boot? screwdriver grab a little screwdriver and try to work it in under that boot it's just got it hooked right there there we go Still trying to grab. Let's see where we are. I could take the screwdriver and try to find the other end of it. Let's see. This is a little more difficult. There we go. And the coil is back up inside of it. Make sure the head, the boot is not twisted in either direction. And you'll feel it click on there. Oh good. That's for the little husky. There are so many, so many brands that are, are using that. And let's see, the little Tercumpsy. 
Well, that's basically the same way too. It's got a coil. Same way. Give it a little squirt. All right. Just had a customer come up with some more gifts. Okay, I squirt a little bit in there. Sometimes these can be glued also. So we're going to find out if this one is. Yeah, this one's been glued. I believe it has. Let me see. Yep, no, it hadn't been. Look at there. Just like the other one. Sometimes when you're trying to put these on and it's dry, you're just out there in the field trying to do this. This thing will kick this way and come off. And so you just squeeze it back on. It's so much easier when you spray lubricant on it, but it's a lot easier to pull it off. So we'll give that a dry. But it'll it'll dissipate and it won't be greasy, this dry cold. It'll keep it from keep it from corroding like the other spring we saw. It was all rusty. Now, let's check out this Honda right here. Because this is going to be different. I'm going to pull this cover off. Get it out of the way so we can see the plug better. Okay. Where's my flashlight? This one appears like it may have a coil too. Let's see if this one's been glued. What did I do with my strike hold? I said over here that guy just picked up his hedge trimmers and I just lubricated his hedge trimmers with this. Strike hold. Give it a little squirt. Let it run down. Yeah, this one uses the same style too. This one's got a double hook. Yeah. That one's got a double hook. And then we'll just push it right back on. And let's see. Sometimes you'll run into a style like this. This is just a simple little crimp. And let's spin around here and we'll take a look at the Briggs coil. Let's see. I don't believe this Briggs, nope, that's not being glued. See, a lot of sometimes back in the day you could, you could unscrew this cable wire from the coil itself but now they're all bonded they got some kind of glue and stuff in there i'm not sure how exactly that's attached now but let that run down a little bit this is where i punched myself in the gut and this one's acting like it might be glued And I just flip strike hold right on my glasses. Mm. Yep, I believe this one might be one that's glued on there. We'll give it a good pull. And then we'll slide them. Oh, it's going to come out of the coil down here. I believe this one's going to be glued. Take a screwdriver down in there, make sure this little clip ain't just was holding it. There we go. All right, you can see that come completely off. You can see where it was crimped, and you can see the wire. The wire comes out, and the wire gets folded over. 
And let's dig out a little crap too. There it is. So this wire will be folded back over itself. This will be laid over it, and it's just a crimp. So that's what we'll do. We'll uncrimp it. If I can get a hold of it. Hmm. Uh, let me see. I need to get something a little more narrow. Okay, that's how that is. So what we'll do, it looks to me like that wire has come off. It looks to me like that wire is broke. Laying in there. Ooh, I tell you, I just can't see good anymore. Yeah, that wire will. I'm gonna take my razor blade and cut it back just a little bit because that wire has broken off, which in turn is probably gonna make the cable too short to reuse again. But this is a bad coil anyway, off of a junk engine. Okay, there's the cord, the innards. And that's about how much you want. Cut that little piece off right there. Okay. So what we'll do is fold it back. Slide this over it. Stop it right there. There's a tool to do this, but I don't have one because I don't do it so often. I don't have to. And then we'll just give it a good crimping back. And there we go. That wire is coming under this and it's coming back. So I'll just stick this back on if it'll let me. And there we go. It's back in there, but it's twisted just a little bit. We'll rotate it. And there we go. So that's that. You can buy them ends any auto parts store. And that's that. That is about that. So that is my video on how I like to replace spark plug boots. Uh, if you got a particular one you want me to look at and check out, I may actually have the engine out there in the shed. Uh, the Kawasaki engines are going to be just like the Briggs, uh, I believe. Uh, well, guys, I appreciate y'all watching the video. Kind of a slow day today, and I figured I'd do that. Kind of drizzly and cool, and just kind of a just kind of a lazy day. I'm just oh, I needed a lazy day so bad. Whew! Well, y'all holler at me if you need me, and I love you. And y'all be good. See you on the next one.